This song, like all our songs, I was watching TV really late at night, children. and I started to get some really bad stomach pains. So bad, I had to run to the bathroom. I went to the bathroom, I couldn't stop going, and when I finally stopped going, the pains weren't going away, so I went to the emergency room at the hospital. The doctor was there that night and ran a whole bunch of tests. And the doctor says, it appears you have food poisoning. So I went home not thinking much of it. And the following night I was watching TV eating late at night after my long day of doing everything I was doing. I got home and the pains came back that night worse than the night before. I got to the hospital and there was a different doctor there that night. They ran a whole bunch of tests. And they says it appears you have food poisoning. Two nights in a row. Now this was getting serious because season finales were coming on. <laughs> so I'll never forget a couple of nights passed by and it was the final third night of that week. The pains came back worse than any of the other nights. I had to stop watching TV, run to the bathroom, and I was going to the bathroom and the only thing that was coming out was blood. Now I didn't know much about health and nutrition back then, but if I knew if blood was coming out of my body at this rate, something was wrong. I finally, uh, I couldn't figure out what to do. I finally figured a temporary cure. I moved the TV where I could see it from the bathroom. <laughs> but I lost so much blood, I was so dizzy, I couldn't figure out what I was looking at. So I went to the hospital and both doctors were there at night. And I said, this is getting very serious. I need to know what's going on because reruns are coming on soon. <laughs> As you could tell, I was addicted to TV. Well, the doctors ran a whole bunch of tests and they said, we definitely know what's wrong with you. You have food poisoning. <laughs> Three times in one week they told me I had food poisoning. I thought one of two things, either the doctors were incorrect or somebody was trying to kill me. And at that time I couldn't come up with too many people that didn't want me around back then. So I figured the doctors were incorrect in what they were telling me. And that time I had drug insurance, which a lot of people call health insurance, but I call it drug insurance, but it doesn't pay for health, it pays for drugs. So I went to this doctor near my house and she ran a whole bunch of tests and she finally said, oh, we definitely know what's wrong with you. She said, you have something called inflammatory bowel disease. I was so happy when she told me that. She said, what are you so happy about? I said, I don't have food poisoning. <laughs> she said, do you know what inflammatory bowel disease is? And I said, no. She says, it's, all, it's also known as ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. It's inflammation of the colon, where my colon was lined with many ulcers. It was very painful, but the worst part of the disease is when the average person has to go to the bathroom, their body gives them a signal, usually two to three hours, to say, in the next two to three hours, you better find a bathroom. When you have inflammatory bowel disease, this signals two to three minutes if you're lucky. And you can imagine me living this type of lifestyle, how this was going to mess up my rhythm. So I didn't know what to do. The doctors told me there was no known medical cure. And at 20 years old, she told me there was a high risk for colon cancer. But she said, don't worry, we have a cure for colon cancer. <laughs> I said, you don't have a cure for inflammatory bowel disease, but you have a cure for colon cancer? She said, yeah, if we cut out your colon, you can't get cancer, colon cancer. And I said, I'm not cutting out anything. And, and, and she said, well, then you're going to have to take drugs. She said medicine, but I'm saying drugs was the same thing. And I said, for how long? And I'll never forget what she told me. She said, for the rest of your life. And I asked her, was there any side effects to his medications? And she said to me, possibly some minor side effects. Well, I went to the pharmacist to take it out, and I gave him the, med the, the prescription, and he gave me back medicine and a paper, and on the top of the paper it said in big red letters, major side effects to this medication. And I said, I think you made a mistake. And he said, why? I said, because my doctor told me there were minor side effects, and this paper says major. He looked at the paper, he looked at the drug, and he said, no, that's correct. So I didn't know who to believe. So I took the medicine, and I found out real quickly that my doctor was incorrect. I started suffering from all these side effects. And I didn't know what to do, but at the time, all I knew how to do when I didn't feel good was go to a doctor. So I went back to my doctor and I told her I was suffering from all these other things. So she wrote me out another prescription for the side effects of the original prescription. And I said, is there any side effects to this one? And it was like a tape recorder. She said, possibly some minor side effects. <laughs> well, I went to the pharmacist and the same thing happened. He gave me this big paper with big red letters, major side effects. This happened several times before I was suffering all these side effects. I realized if I didn't die from my original illness, I was going to die from the side effects of all these other medications. I had to figure something else out. So then somebody told me that diet had something to do with my condition. So I asked my doctor. Was there any connection between diet and inflammatory bowel disease? 
and she said there's no medical studies to prove there's any connection between diet and inflammatory bowel disease. Well, since she wasn't getting me better and everything she told me to do was getting me worse, I figured to look more into this. Somebody told me if I eliminated dairy products from my diet, my condition would begin to heal. So I asked my doctor, was there any connection between dairy products <laughs> and inflammatory bowel disease? And my doctor said there's no medical studies between dairy products and inflammatory bowel disease. Here's where I got wise. I figured, since everything my doctor was telling me up to that point wasn't working, and every other doctor I went to, I saw the same people in the doctor's office, so they weren't getting cured. I figured the doctors didn't have all the answers. So I said, let me try something out and see what happens. So I decided, without telling my doctor, I would eliminate dairy products to see what would happen. Now, I didn't even know what dairy products was at the time. I knew it was milk because it said in big letters right on the container, dairy milk. But I didn't know it was ice cream and butter and cheese and all these things. And when I found that it was, I realized 80% of my diet had dairy products in it. But I was still determined to get to an answer, so I decided I would elimin eliminate dairy products to see what would happen. And I did, and I started to feel better. So then somebody told me if I stopped eating animals, my condition would begin to continue to heal. So I asked my doctor, was there, was there any connection between consuming animals and my condition? Take a wild guess what she told me. Do you know my doctor? She said, there are no medical studies to prove there's any connection between animal products and your condition. When she told me this, I became a vegetarian like overnight. <laughs> and it worked. I started to feel better. I was like, this doctor's amazing. <laughs> Every time she told me to do something, I did the opposite and I felt better. Now, if you want to be the healthiest person in the room, you go to the most popular doctor. And whenever they say you do the opposite, you'll be pretty healthy. By the way, are there any doctors here? <laughs> Well, let me clarify something. Some doctors are wonderful and a true blessing. Emergency room doctors, cases of spinal cord injury, plastic surgery after an accident, some chiropractors and some other doctors are truly a blessing. But if we're going to put something in our body that's going to create a pain or an illness, the answer isn't taking some drug to deal with that pain. The answer is to eliminate what's causing the problem. Health doesn't begin with what you add to your diet. It's what you eliminate. So here I was now eating a vegetarian diet, feeling okay, but not completely better. Now I didn't know it at the time, but I was eating a junk food vegetarian diet, falling for the same trick most people fall for. If it says organic on the box, they think it's healthy. So if you have cookies, then you have organic cookies, you think it's healthy, but guess what? It's still cookies. So I didn't know any better, and I was eating this junk food vegetarian diet, but it was an improvement than what I was eating. But I wasn't completely better than I wanted to be. So then somebody told me stress had a lot to do with my condition. So I wanted to be sure about this, so I asked my doctor. <laughs> I said, is there any connection between stress and my condition? And she said, there's no medical studies to prove there's any connection between stress and your condition. So when she told me that, I knew I had to reduce the stress in my life. So I eliminated my doctor. <laughs> right away, I felt better. Now let me clarify something, because I am from New York. I didn't like eliminate my doctor. I just stopped going to see her. I just want to clarify that. So, so here I was. I wanted to continue to eliminate the stress. I eliminated my doctor, and I wanted to move to a more stressless environment. This was about 17 years ago, and I looked all over the country, and I chose West Palm Beach, Florida. Now, when I moved down there back then, there wasn't too much stress going on. People knew how to vote down there at that time. <laughs> it was a very stressless environment. So I get down there, and I remember I kept seeing this van past my house. And I remember, I recognized the van every day, but it had a word on the side of it that I couldn't pronounce. So I knew it was the same van, and it was the same fellow driving the van. So then finally I said to myself one day, if I see that van one more time, I'm going to follow it to see where it's going. So the next day the van comes speeding down my block and I got, get in my car and follow it to see where it's going. And the van drives to the park in my life I've ever been to a real health food store. Now I've been to many health food stores prior to that, but they were fake health food stores. Now I'm not the one to focus on the negative, so I'm not going to give you the name to these fake health food stores. I'll just give you the initials. GNC. <laughs> Oh, they have that here? Okay. So, so the van stopped, and, and I stopped my car to see what's happening. And it's a real health food store now, and the back door swing open very slowly. And I see about six of the most sickly looking people I've ever seen practically fall out of the back of the van. And then the front door swings open very quickly, and I see one of the healthiest people I've ever seen come out of the front of the van, and he starts walking towards the health food store, and they start following him. 
So I wanted to know what was going on, so I just tagged along the back of the line, hoping...